وَأَقُولُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْكَرِيمُ الْمُنْزَلُ وَأَقُولُوا قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ وَالْمُصْطَفَى الْهَادِي وَلَا أَتَأَوَّلُ Is a woman allowed to threaten her husband with seeking a khula or a divorce if he takes a second wife? What should a man do in this instance if he wishes to marry again but fears leaving behind a broken family? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in I looked at a number of different fatawa from various scholars on this topic and I found that they were very harsh on this issue and very stern on this issue uh, and they considered it to be forbidden for a woman to threaten her husband with a khula or with talaq simply because he married or he wanted to marry another woman uh, a second wife or because he married a second wife and this includes saying things like it's her or me or forcing him to divorce uh, the other woman or putting pressure on him to do so and I found that there were among the people of knowledge those who attributed this to the major sins to the kabair from the major sins however there is a second situation in which the issue may be somewhat different and that is if a woman does not uh, threaten her husband with this nor does she say to him if you marry again I will uh, divorce you or I will take a khula or if you marry again I will force you to divorce me or divorce her or whatever but what she does do is she's patient but in the end she realizes that she can't manage it she's patient with it she doesn't threaten him in that way she doesn't force him in that way but she comes to the conclusion that she can't fulfill the laws of Allah towards her husband she can't fulfill the laws of Allah as it relates to her husband because of this issue and in this case we believe that it is permissible for her to seek a khula because it comes under the same ruling as the uh, hadith of the wife of Thabit bin Qais and the hadith is narrated by uh, Imam al-Bukhari from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma uh, in which she said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she didn't blame Thabit uh, in his khuluq wala deen and not in his religion but she mentioned that she feared she feared al-kufr fil islam she feared that she would not be able to uh, she would not be able to fulfill the rights of the husband and she would not be able to uh, to continue uh, as his wife fulfilling the rights that Allah had commanded her to fulfill so the Prophet ﷺ allowed her a khula for this and it wasn't because of a second wife but the, the point is that if a woman reaches such a stage where she reaches a stage in a marriage where she says that because of certain things that have happened I can't fulfill his rights anymore and I fear that I'm actually just earning sin in the sight of Allah then she has the right to go and ask for a khula and it becomes the matter of the judge to decide if they need counseling or if it's a khula that they can be given immediately or whether there could be some reconciliation then that comes into the matter of the judge who may well give her advice and tell her to be patient and tell her to you know to to try and give it time but ultimately the end of the day if the matter reaches that extent without her threatening her husband and without her pressurizing him saying okay i will try my best to be patient she's waited she tried but she couldn't manage it there's no doubt that that, that being a co-wife is not an easy it's not an easy thing it's not an easy thing for a woman to manage and it's not uh, something which is easy for her to bear so a woman might say that i am earning I feel like I'm earning sin now instead of good deeds because this marriage is not bringing me nearer to Allah it's pushing me away uh, and the thing that's pushing me away is I'm not able to fulfill 
my husband's rights without blaming him for what he did because what he did was not haram. Uh, so that is, you know, that's one thing to bear in mind. It's also really important, uh, the question or part of the question, mentioned the issue of a husband fears that if he were to marry again, he would be leaving behind a broken family. And there is no doubt that this is something which should be given consideration because the situation in our time today is not like it was in the past. The situation now is that when a husband and wife divorce, there are often serious and severe repercussions upon the children and the wider family. And there can be really, really serious things happen. Uh, and a lot, of, uh, the, a lot of the things that used to be there where uh, divorced women would find it relatively easy to remarry and children's rights would be protected and so on, those things have often disappeared in many situations in, in the modern time that we are in. And therefore, it is important for a man to think about that before he decides that he wants to marry again. Marrying again is something permissible in Islam. It's not haram. And it may be obligatory for a man if he fears for his religion and he fears that he will not be able to stay within the limits set by Allah. That, that, that could be a situation. But he does have to think about the consequences. Now, there is one other situation that I wanted to mention, which could be taken into account here. And that is if the woman has stipulated in the marriage contract that she does not want her husband to take a second wife. So... Within the marriage contract, there are additional conditions, and we know the Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, The most deserving of conditions for you to fulfill are those which make the private parts halal. And we know the Prophet ﷺ said, that Muslims have to fulfill their conditions. And so, generally speaking, from the people of knowledge, from from what I have understood from the people of knowledge is that it is acceptable for a woman to put a condition in the marriage contract to say that she does not want her husband to marry another wife. If then the husband accepts that and marries her, that's his decision. Whether I would recommend a man to marry a woman who puts that condition, that's a different matter. That's a different situation. Everybody has their own situation that they have to make a decision about. Perhaps a man might turn around and say, well, I'm sorry, that's not the kind of condition that I would be willing to accept if this is something he really wants to do. But in any case, and if he were to agree, uh, then she would have the right to dissolve the marriage. She would go to the judge and to say to him that I had made a condition and my husband had agreed at the time of marriage that he would not marry again. He's married again. Therefore, I want to exercise my right to cancel the marriage because he has broken one of the conditions of the nikah which were agreed upon. Uh, and I don't think that this is a condition which falls into that which is haram, uh, generally speaking. But it certainly has to be taken into account the difficulties that we have that are unique to this time as it relates to issues of divorce, particularly when children are involved. And Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.